the Department of Justice dropped a bombshell. They revealed a chilling scheme. Russia had been secretly funding a U.S. media company. Tenet Media, supposedly independent, was a puppet, dancing to the tune of Russian rubles. The goal? To sway the 2024 election. Russia funneled almost $10 million to pay popular right-wing commentators, promoting pro-Russian narratives. The DOJ's announcement sent shockwaves. It cut to the heart of our democracy. Tenet Media seemed like any other media company. It claimed to be a platform for independent creators. It boasted a roster of popular right-wing figures. Benny Johnson, Tim Poole, Dave Rubin, big names with millions of followers. But behind this facade, the DOJ alleged a darker truth. Tenet Media was a front for Russian influence, created, funded, and controlled by Kremlin operatives. The DOJ's indictment painted a sophisticated operation. Russian operatives used shell companies and fake identities. They created the illusion of a legitimate American company. But the money trail led straight back to Moscow. The influencers associated with Tenet Media found themselves in the eye of the storm. Benny Johnson, Tim Poole, Dave Rubin. These were not fringe figures. They were stars in the conservative media ecosystem. And now, their credibility was in tatters. The DOJ alleged that these influencers, wittingly or unwittingly, had become pawns in Russia's game. They were paid handsomely to produce content that aligned with Russian interests. Whether they knew the true source of the funding remained unclear. But one thing was certain. Their reputations would never be the same. The influencers, for their part, vehemently denied any wrongdoing. They claimed they were unaware of Russia's involvement. They insisted they had full editorial control over their content. They were victims, they said, not collaborators. But the damage was done. The public was left to wonder. Who to believe? The DOJ's case hinged on the money. They needed to prove that the funds flowing into Tenet Media originated in Russia. And they needed to show that the influencers knew, or should have known, where the money was coming from. The investigation uncovered a complex web of financial transactions. Money was shuffled through shell companies and offshore accounts. Fake names and aliases were used to obscure the true source of the funds. But the DOJ, it seemed, had followed the money trail with meticulous care. They presented evidence of wire transfers, bank records, and internal communications. They showed how money from Russian government accounts made its way into the coffers of Tenet Media. It was a damning indictment, one that painted a clear picture of a deliberate and coordinated effort to conceal the origin of the funds. Section 5. Claims of Ignorance. Can they plead innocence? The influencers caught in the crosshairs faced a difficult choice. Admit wrongdoing or maintain their innocence. Most chose the latter. They claimed they were unaware of any Russian funding. They insisted they had been duped, misled, betrayed. Benny Johnson, in a lengthy statement, said he was shocked and appalled by the allegations. Tim Poole, in a video posted to his millions of followers, claimed he had no idea about any Russian involvement. Dave Rubin, in a series of tweets, denounced the DOJ's investigation as a witch hunt. Their claims of ignorance, however, were met with skepticism. The DOJ alleged that the influencers were paid exorbitant sums of money. They were given lucrative contracts, far exceeding industry standards. Was it really plausible, critics asked, that they had no idea where the money was coming from? Section 6. The fallout begins. Consequences and reactions. The DOJ's revelations sent shockwaves through the media landscape. News organizations scrambled to cover the story. Pundits and commentators weighed in, offering their analysis and opinions. The public, meanwhile, watched with a mix of fascination and horror. The consequences for those implicated were swift and severe. 
Blaze Media, a conservative outlet that featured content from Lauren Chen, one of the figures linked to Tenet Media, terminated her contract. YouTube, the video sharing giant, took down Tenet Media's channel and other channels associated with the company. The scandal also sparked a wider conversation about foreign interference in U.S. elections. It raised troubling questions about the vulnerability of social media platforms to manipulation, and it highlighted the challenges of combating disinformation in the digital age. Section 7. A Wake-Up Call Foreign interference in the digital age. The Tenet media scandal was a wake-up call. It showed how foreign actors could exploit the openness of the internet to spread propaganda and sow discord. It demonstrated the ease with which they could manipulate social media algorithms and amplify their message to reach millions. Russia, of course, was not the only culprit. China, Iran, and other countries were also actively engaged in information warfare. They used a variety of tactics, hacking, disinformation, trolling, and astroturfing. Their goal was to undermine trust in democratic institutions, sow division within societies, and advance their own geopolitical interests. The threat was real and growing. Social media platforms, with their vast reach and influence, had become battlegrounds for information warfare. And the United States, with its tradition of free speech and open debate, was particularly vulnerable. Section 8. The Kremlin's Playbook Understanding Russia's Motives Russia's alleged involvement in the Tenet Media scheme was not an isolated incident. It was part of a broader pattern of behavior. The Kremlin, under Vladimir Putin, had become increasingly adept at using information as a weapon. Russia's motives were clear to weaken the West, sow discord among its adversaries, and undermine the liberal international order. They sought to erode trust in democratic institutions, exploit social divisions, and promote a narrative that favored their own authoritarian model. The Kremlin's tactics were sophisticated and adaptable. They used a combination of traditional media outlets, like RT and Sputnik, and social media platforms to spread propaganda and disinformation. They employed armies of trolls and bots to amplify their message and harass their critics. Section 9. Fighting Back The U.S. government's response. The U.S. government was not sitting idly by. They recognized the threat posed by foreign interference and were taking steps to counter it. The DOJ's investigation into Tenet Media was just one example. The Trump administration, despite its often cozy relationship with Russia, imposed sanctions on individuals and entities linked to election interference. The Biden administration continued these efforts, vowing to hold Russia accountable for its actions. Social media companies, under pressure from lawmakers and the public, were also taking steps to combat foreign interference. They were investing in technology to detect and remove fake accounts. They were working to increase transparency in political advertising. And they were cooperating with law enforcement to identify and disrupt malicious actors. Section 10. Safeguarding Democracy, Lessons Learned, and Future Challenges. The Tenet Media scandal served as a stark reminder of the fragility of democracy. It showed how easily foreign actors could exploit vulnerabilities in the information ecosystem to sow discord and undermine trust. The challenge going forward was to find ways to safeguard democratic institutions without stifling free speech or curtailing civil liberties. It was a delicate balancing act, one that required a multifaceted approach. One key lesson was the importance of media literacy. Citizens needed to be able to critically evaluate information, identify bias, and distinguish between fact and fiction. Education, public awareness campaigns, and support for independent journalism were all essential. <laughs>